All right, traders, within this video, I'm going to be doing an in-depth price action analysis on the SPY. It is currently getting crushed here during extended hours. And with that being said, I'm also going to be going over the top stocks that are on my radar to potentially buy calls or buy puts into this week, guys. There's going to be some phenomenal trading opportunities. We have so many stocks at their key oversold dip buying levels for their short term being that are definitely due for a bounce. So within this video, I'm going to be going over the price action, when to be long biased, when to be short biased. This is going to give you a much better understanding on when these stocks are going to be a buy and when these stocks are going to have that short term reversal, right? So I'm going to show you what it is to look for. So let's get right into this price action analysis. I'm going to walk you through some upcoming trading plans, when to go long, when to go short. Do me a favor, smash that like button and let's get right into the video. So as you can see right here, um, let's go over the SPY. So in terms of the SPY, you know, in our past videos, we had consistently talked about this channel. The channel was from 466 to 471. So in order for the bears to take control of the macro move, they would have to crack this support level at 466, turn it into resistance. And then what would happen is it would start to fill the gaps that were waiting to fill below. I know it's hard to see on the daily, but there's actually two small gaps on SPY. One has been filled right here at 458.79. The next one that is on track to fill is at 453.42, which is going to be a key short-term trend reversal for the SPY. You can see it's already having a massive gap down. So this is going to be very important important heading in tomorrow along with the stocks that are following SPY. So in terms of a potential scalping opportunity, in terms of dip buying, what you want to pay attention to is for the SPY and you know for the stocks that correlate with it at the time, pay attention to $453.42. There's a gap to fill right there. If you see it consolidating, starting to bounce out that key level 453.50, then it's going to be a nice scalping opportunity in my opinion. Now, if that cracks and reacts as a resistance level, it's going to be on track to go to $449, which would be the next dip buying zone. So I want to see how it reacts to filling this gap. Here's what I think we could see for the short term. I think we're going to be on track to fill this gap, you know, if not tomorrow, then early into this week at 453.42. And then once we fill that gap, I think we'll see some sort of short term reversal. So the plan would be to potentially buy stocks for the short term being kind of ride them back up for their short term gaps to fill above. SPY has a gap to fill above at 466.45. This would currently be one of the best prices to buy puts and to, you know, short the SPY once it gets back up and fills this gap. So you see, I, my price lower set, those are the key levels that I'm paying attention to. Um, let's get into stocks now. So in terms of stocks, we have a lot of, you know, stocks that are extremely oversold that have been beating down, that have been beating down for the short term being here. And a lot of them correlate with that gap fill reversal strategy, you know, which is that same strategy that we had a student use on Tesla to literally nail the bottom at. Go back and watch my previous video. He made over 10K profit within his first week of the program using this strategy. So there's a couple stocks right now that are in correlation with the strategy. We just need to see some continuation of strength, right? So this is what I'm looking at on Upstart. Um, Upstart is extremely oversold. This went from 441.49 all the way down to 139 very quickly. So it dropped over 50%. It's due for some sort of reversal. It's due for some sort of bounce. And what I'm looking at here is there's a gap to fill on Upstart at 135.68. So let's see how it's been reacting ever since it filled that gap. You can see initially it cracked and then it started breaking out, getting to a high of 140. And then you can see the stock gap down. And as soon as this stock gap down, just like Tesla and Affirm and a lot of other stocks, you know, on Friday, they shot back up and they filled their gaps and then they had reversals, right? So if they continue to, if these stocks continue to follow, you know, the SPY, then they're going to be on track to go back towards their key dip levels. With that being said, what I'm looking for on upstart is if I see a breakout above 140, it's going to be a nice quick trade to run this back up to like 150. So that's what I'm looking at. I'm looking for a breakout above 140. If it turns into support and breaks out, it's going to be an ideal buy to run this back to 150. If we don't see a breakout, if we don't see it turn into support, then I'm going to be waiting towards, you know, 134. But I want you to keep in mind when a lot of these plays that follow SPY, I'm mainly looking to see how they react once SPY hits 453. And if SPY looks bearish, then I'm going to wait to see how they react towards 449. And those are going to be the two potential dip buy and reversal levels for the SPY and for the stocks that follow the SPY. Now, in terms of, you know, my point of views, like I've been saying in several of my other videos, um, with the SPY, 
nice. I'm still bearish. You know, I'm still bearish from a macro point of view. Now for the micro, for the short term, we're due for some sort of, you know, pop, some sort of spike. And with that being said, I think it's either going to happen at 453.50 or 449. We have to see how it reacts at 453.50 first. Um, but from a macro point of view, you know, in terms of like where it's heading for the next couple of weeks, I'm still bearish. You know, I'm still bearish on that. But there's going to be some micro opportunities to, you know, day trade and like a potential short term swing trade. Now, Mara, Mara is another stock that is extremely beaten down. Right. So this one likes to follow, you know, the cryptocurrencies like to follow Bitcoin. Right. With this one being said, it consistently pushes for new all time highs. And I've studied the history of Mara. It typically does not go lower than 58 percent. I've studied the history of all of its biggest crash. You know, if you want to be able to predict where the bottom is, one metric you want to factor in. There's a lot of different metrics. So write this down. This is going to be one of them. I want to time to go over them within this video. We go further in depth on that within Trader Society. One of them is going to be is how, you know, how big of a drop does it typically bottom at, right? What's the max drop it consistently has over a time period? If you do this with Moderna, it would have worked out phenomenal. Every single drop, every single time Moderna mRNA drops 40 to 50%, it always shoots back up and pushes for new all-time highs and fills all the gaps above. And Mara is another stock that does that. And this topped out, as you can see right here, this topped out at 57 and then it bottomed at like $19. I believe that was a 58% crash. And I studied the history. It does not go lower than 60%. And right now we're heading towards that key level. So you can see right here, it got to 83.45. Now we're all the way back down towards 32.38. With that being said, there's a key support level and there's some gaps that are waiting to fill on Mara. So with that being said, there's a gap to fill right here at 31.58. And there's another gap to fill here at 30.61. So I want to see how it reacts towards those gaps. Um, for this one, the bottom is most likely going to potentially be $30 to like $25. Absolute low is $22. Either way, regardless, this is going to be a great buy and hold for the long term. So this is just something on my radar. I want to get like some leap call options on this one. I think it has huge potential. That's the main thing I want to do with that one. I think it's still too early to buy as this is most likely going to be heading towards $30. But I want to put this on your radar because it's getting to that point where the bottom is near, you know, and I wanted to put this on your radar for a midterm swing trade where we get like some leap options, like three months minimum, um, buy some calls on that. I'm waiting for confirmation and I'm waiting for the right price. So in terms of one of the right prices is going to be $30 a share. That's one of the right prices. If it cracks that, then I'm going to look to see how it reacts towards 25. Absolute lowest I can see this going is $20. Um, but it's most likely going to bottom out in between 25 to 30. So Zoom. Zoom is a stock that is on track to take off. This looks extremely bullish. It's extremely oversold. This went from 589 all the way down to, you know, your 170s. Now, with that being said, there was a gap to fill right here, a nice gap fill reversal at a key support level at 179. Ever since it filled that gap, as you can see, bullish pins, a lot of strength coming in. It tried to break above $200 right here. It failed to do it here. It failed to do it here. It quickly went down to 175 But look at the strength. Your volume is stronger than ever. See this blue volume bar? See how it's a lot higher than these ones? Zoom looks phenomenal. And with that being said, you know, this is on track to break out. You have strong bullish pins multiple times right here. It failed to break out towards $200 and it quickly got rejected towards 175 That was a 25 point move. So if $200 right here can turn into a support level and break out, how high can this go for like the short term being for like a week or two weeks from now? Well, look at the price action. It's been moving up and down 25 points one sided. So if Zoom can hold $200 and break out, it's going to be on track to go to 225 within about one week. That's what it's going to be on track to do. So for Zoom, I'm looking for a breakout above $201. If we can get that breakout, I'm going to be interested in buying some calls, probably like a 14-day expiration, and then riding this one back up. There's a gap to fill right here as well, 243. The sky is the limit for the short term, the midterm, and the long term for Zoom. I absolutely love it at this price. This is going to be a trade. I'm very interested in swing trading this one this week. Um, in terms of a firm, a firm has a key gap fill level right here at $92.06 to be exact. As you can see, as soon as it filled the gap at $92.06, it shot up all the way to $98. Next day, it gaps down, bottoms, double bottoms, shoots back up and fills the gap. Then it has a pullback like Tesla did Friday. With that being said, 
if this can break out and hold above 99 to 100 dollars it's going to be a buy to ride this back up to 110 you know for a short-term trade or swing trade now if 100 dollars doesn't break out tomorrow if these are just getting crushed tomorrow i'm gonna look to see how it reacts towards the 92 dollars a share that's something that's on my radar as well as it's extremely oversold and it's due for some sort of bounce right if 92 dollars is reacting bearish i'm going to be waiting to buy this towards 67 dollars and 90 cents that is going to be a key level where this should have a phenomenal reversal set your price alerts guys there's going to be so many phenomenal plays um our next stock is salesforce salesforce is looking very very bullish as you can see right here, there was a gap to fill right here at 247. As soon as it fills the gap, it rips back up, goes to 250s. The key for this to continue to run as it is looking extremely bullish right here is it needs to turn $253 into a support level. If it can turn 253 into a support level and start to break out, within about a week, this will be on track to go to 266 to fill this gap here. So for Salesforce, look at the breakout above 254 and then that's going to be an ideal dip buying an opportunity as of now it's having a gap fill reversal it's showing signs of strength the volume is coming in it's looking really really bullish so we need to look for strength on these right we have to see how they react one thing that i want you guys to understand is for the stocks that follow the spy i've noticed that they sometimes do not follow each other when they're at such oversold levels so keep that in mind because the spy is extremely overbought and what i've noticed is you know a lot of these stocks are extremely oversold, right? And I've noticed when they're extremely oversold, sometimes they do not follow the SPY. So don't let SPY fool you. You know, you have to pay attention to how these stocks react, right? If they're green and SPY is red, they're obviously doing the inverse of each other. They're extremely oversold. I see that happen all the time. So that's something to take note of and be aware of as well. Um, our next stock is going to be BKKT. This is a potential short squeeze play that people have been talking about. There's a gap to fill at 915. As you can see, it has filled that gap. And ever since it has been filling that gap, it's been trying to bounce and have a reversal. If this is green tomorrow, this is going to be on track to go back to 10. If $10 can break out, the sky's the limit as there's not much resistance and there's a gap to fill towards 1370s. Keep an eye on the $10 breakout for BKKT, right? So we have to look for positive reactions around there. Um, Airbnb. Airbnb. This is a very similar um, chart to... Um, you know, to Salesforce, it's extremely beaten down. It's oversold for the short term being. However, it's not a gap fill reversal. This is mainly just a support. The main play with this one is if it's green tomorrow, just simply buy it for a quick scalp. It should continue to run. It should close strong. So we'll see how that reacts tomorrow. Not the greatest trend, not the greatest pattern though. Um, let's get into our next stock, Walmart. So in terms of this one, you know, this is really picking up with the volume and the volatility. The options are going crazy on this. With that being said, I want you to look to see how this reacts towards $136. Wait for this to go to like 135, 136. Look for a quick scalping opportunity. Look for reversal to buy some call options. Those call options are going to be extremely beaten down. The weeklies that expire this Friday, um, as this stock has been getting wrecked for the past two days now. So look to see how that reacts towards 135. That could be a potential dip buying opportunity. As of now, this is still bearish though. Um, and I believe that's it. Let's double check right here. So yeah, we went over all the stocks except for two more to go. DocU. DocU is on track for another gap breakout. I recently used the gap breakout strategy on this day. I bought the gap breakout at 155, bought the calls, sold it towards the top, and I made you know almost 100% on those. It was like a 20 minute trade. With that being said, this is looking bullish. It's heating up. It's getting above this key 155 level. If you see this break above 155, it's going to be on track to go to 163. So you're going to want to pick up some calls on that. So for this one, look for the breakout above 155. If it's up, if it's looking bullish, look for the breakout on that. It's going to be a great buying opportunity. This has huge potential as well for the long term. I do believe within the long term, it's going to fill the gap at 233. Um, so leap options are definitely in play for this one. And in terms of when it has the next massive breakout, once this can break out above 163.77 and turn that into support, it's going to have the next massive breakout, most likely run to like 175 the same day. NVIDIA. NVIDIA is looking extremely bearish. Extremely bearish. My target for NVIDIA this week is going to be to fill the gap. There's a gap to fill at 266. That's my target on NVIDIA. Um, it's not 100% the best strategy because it is towards key breakdown, but it's extremely, you know, sitting towards all-time highs as well. 
So there is some potential here. With that being said, as you can see right here for NVIDIA, your key support, right? Your key support right here, you can say this as well, has now turned into resistance on this daily candlestick, which is extremely bearish. This is on track to go back down to fill the gap at 266. Once it fills the gap, if you see signs of reversal, scalp it, dip on it, ride it back up to 275 to 280 a share. Um, if it cracks 266 and then, so say it cracks 266, turns it into resistance level, it'll be on track within time, within like a couple weeks to go back to this gap fill level at 231, which would be the best price you can buy in NVIDIA at. And there's a good sign it will go back to 231. So we'll see with the, you know, within like more midterm price action, we'll see. Um, so yeah. We'll see how that reacts. You know, if you see this struggling in the 280s around there, you can look to potentially buy the put, write it back down to fill this gap below 266. My target for NVIDIA is going to be $266. And then there's a potential dip buying opportunity at that level. So yeah, that is going to be um, the top stocks on my radar to trade options with this week. Um, for those of you with in Trader Society, Make sure you are up tomorrow at Market Open as I will be trading live once again at Market Open. I will see you guys tomorrow in the live stream. I will also see you tomorrow within the chat room. If you want to be a part of Trader Society, all the information is explained in the link in the description down below. I will see you guys tomorrow and um, peace.